Shalom. Before I start, we're going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, or Kakodash, to honors to the elders and apostles, the great millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to all elect Akim Wa learning and teaching of truth and sincerity, your brother Malak from GMS Detroit, another video for the spirit. All right, we're going to be dealing with Northern Kingdom, the fact that, uh, you know, our Northern Kingdom brothers and sisters, you know, so called Latinos and Native Americans, uh, that they too are oppressed under Esau Edom, all right? And they also have a, a caste system in a sense of, you know, uh, the closer you can get to E, to Edom the white man, you know, the better you are, which is a, a hob of shit. But, you know, it's not just about uh, Judah <laughs> or, the, you know, the dark ones. Don't forget our Northern Kingdom brothers and sisters is going through it too. So I'm gonna play two clips. All right, I'm gonna play this one first. Let's get into it. This is called Mexican Racism. All right, and if you didn't know, the Northern Kingdom of Israel consists of the terms that we use today, Latinos and Native Americans. All right, Latinos as in Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, El Salvadorians, Guatemalans, Panamanians, uh, Chileans, uh, Hondurians, uh, Brazilians, right? And you have our Native American brothers and sisters, all the many different nations, the, na the Native nations, the tribes as they call themselves, Choctaw, Cherokee, Chickawa, you know, Blackfoot, uh, you know, all that good stuff, right? Seminole Indians, right? So let's see what's going on on their side of the fence. So a lot of people don't know it's a Mexico and it's border with Guatemala. Yes. Okay? We don't let them in. So the same thing that America does to Mexico, we do to Guatemala. Okay? It's it just the news is CNN, Fox, CNN, MSNBC, uh, New York Post. They're never going to show you that. They're working. Just so you know, Mexico is extremely racist. So we have what are the like Guatemalans. Even so, it's all Mexicans. So you got to remember, Mexico was was dominated by the Spaniards. The only reason I look the way I look yes. is because I'm 65 percent Spaniard. Yeah. Mexicans, like real Mexicans, were, were just. Now we're gonna cover that in the scriptures, because uh, what he said, uh, he said it without really understand what understanding what he was saying. All right, for brothers and sisters that are a bit lighter complexion, that doesn't mean you're fucking uh, a heathen. All right, because when you go into the scriptures, you come to realize that our people have been having children with the other nations, you know, for several thousands of years, not just when we got dominated and brought to the Americas. All right. And just and I'll say this, you know, off rip, just because you are a lighter skinned northern kingdom brother or sister doesn't mean you're a fucking cracker. OK. You know, so don't don't get all don't get all trippy on me. I'm going to let them uh, finish. All right. As a matter of fact, you know, I'll say this. My uh, stepmother is Mexican. Her father is a first generation Mexican. Meaning what? He was the first of his family to be born in America. His father, uh, uh, Slaki, Slaki, his, his, her father is a second generation Mexican. He was first born here. But his father, which is her grandfather, is straight up from Mexico. Dark skin, short son of a gun but what did he do he went and came and had a baby with the so-called white woman therefore his son looks white therefore the next child looked at you know so-called white being my stepmother right so that that ain't that ain't you know we know how the, the tribes work all right but i'm just letting them speak known as mexica not mexico yes. mexica are you know five foot four super dark with big noses and the heads pushed back Aztecs and Mayans, like uh, Indians, like Indians. Indians. Yes. Well, we're natives, right? So we're we're blended. So the reality is, in Mexico, till this day, if you were not like complected, somewhat tall, you're from the part. To this day, and so you know that's of a truth. You see, and that's something I've seen growing up. You know, down south when I was growing up, uh, Northern Kingdom who are darker, you know, the darker features, right, get treated a little bit differently to Northern Kingdom who are lighter. All right, you have the phrase in Spanish, meharer la raza, meaning what? Fix the race. So they encourage their children to go and have more children with Edomites. What the fuck are these niggas doing, bro? Come on, y'all. Let me go to uh, Hosea. Boy, man. These Americans, and they, they driving capabilities is just not there. Let's go to uh, Hosea 
the seven. Let's look into the scriptures. Our people have been, uh, especially Northern Kingdom, have been making babies with the heathen. You know, uh, Hosea seven and eight. It says, and now also, you know, we are allowed to. Uh, you as an Israelite man can have whatever woman you want. The problem is when your child is raised up in the fashions and the mindset and the idols of the heathen. That's the true problem, are right? because there are many great Israelite men who had heathen mothers. So don't let that bother you either. All right, Hosea 7 and 8, Ephraim, he hath mixed himself among the people. People, Ephraim is a cake, not turned, all right? And this was back then, so this lets us know that Ephraim, which is the head of the northern kingdom tribes, so you can uh, uh, account this, to all, attribute this to all the tribes, they have been out here getting a hump on, <laughs> you know, with the heathen. They've mixed themselves in the sense of they've been having babies and raising their children up in the fashions of the heathen. Therefore, many of the northern kingdom has lost their way. That's why, although they are Israelites, the ones of them that are, they go through certain curses, they catch certain hell, but they still try to put on that front of trying to live the idealized American family. You know, the big house, you know, home improvement style, you know, fence set up, big trucks outside, right? They're trying to take on after the heathen. And that's a part of the curses, the fact that our people, you know, they, you got niggas, you got niggas just bugged out. Northern Kingdom just super cool. So, all right, you jump down, verse 11. Ephraim also is like a silly dove without heart. They call to Egypt, they go to Assyria. Okay, so they see that. I mean, you see here that our people, uh, especially Northern Kingdom, they're teamed up with the heathen, aligned, all right? And ultimately, the elect out of them are going to come out of that mindset, which we have brothers and sisters now that are Northern Kingdom that are, you know, back in good standing with their Southern Kingdom brothers and sisters. And that's something that we see in this truth, which is beautiful, because here it is, the so-called white man is a true enemy, knocking both our noggins, but we beefing with each other. Uh, uh, my God, thing, you know, right? Or what we, uh, man, hey, I heard my grandma say so once that should offend me. She is like, she is like, we don't, we don't deal with no fucking Mexicans. I said, damn, grandma, <laughs> you don't deal with Mexicans, but y'all let y'all let the white man run up in and run amok, right? But that's our people. Matter of fact, let me see if I can get something out of the history. Uh, so I can, hey, I'm gonna just grab this out of uh, Jeremiah. Uh, I couldn't remember where it's at, but basically, you know, when you go through the wars, uh, not the one with Jeroboam and Rehoboam, Northern and Southern Kingdom, but there was another war where Northern Kingdom went and hired uh, the help of a uh, heathen to fight. All right, and still ended up losing. But you, you see the fact that, you know, our, our people is. Uh, making leagues with everybody except whom they should be, which is Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. All right, Jeremiah 9, uh, 12 and 9. My inheritance is unto me as a speckled bird. The birds round about are against her. Come ye, assemble all the beasts of the field, and come to devour. You can look at that word speckled in Jeremiah. All right. Now, the point of this video basically is just showing you Northern Kingdom, they're under the <laughs> color curses as well. All right. You know, they'll say, and uh, Judah will say, oh, nigga, you color struck. You know, because you got in Southern, you have that in Southern Kingdom, dark skin versus light skin. You know, oh, nigga, you not really black because you, you know, no, nah, you fucking clown. All right. Your, your heritage. First off, we can't treat, we don't, we can't pull our papers up. All right. None of us have that uh, actual physical uh, ancestry uh, paper, that fucking family tree. So first off, we go in the spirit. All right. Uh, Romans 8 and 16 uh, the spirit of its the spirit itself doth bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh right and then we just ask a nigga hey where your people from <laughs> hey where your people from oh on your father's side oh okay cool oh okay you might be one of us you know simple as that so it doesn't uh, although we know that you know there are tears about us uh you don't, you shouldn't immediately get color struck off uh, somebody. Uh, so, uh, let me go to that word, speckled, yep. H6641, uh, looks like 
looks like a Taza Taza Bawai, it looks like. It says, uh, let me see, colored, variegated, speckled. All right. So, uh, speckled as in uh, uh, varicolored, multicolored. All right. That's how we became our appearances. Not only that, but, you know, facial structure. You got certain of Gad and Ruben, some of them have a bit of the Asian look. But when you look at where Gad and Ruben was on the map, you know, they were near Moab and Ammon. So, of course, they would have been over there, you know, getting a hump on. And after you do that for a couple thousands of years, you get a different look. All right, so let me get the next clip. Let's deal with our man's Mario. Now, let's, let's watch him on the left, how he is when he's around the boys. We're going to go drink. He's good. I'm, I'm not so disciplined. He remembers that. So I'm gonna go grab the right side from another video. But you see, so right there, you see him, you know, when he's chilling with the boys. And uh, uh Holmes, da, 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 you know, <laughs> talking shit, eating. But how, how does he have to act when he's on that white man's camera? Let's see. Let me see. From Italian to Hawaiian, Mario Lopez, yeah. But you know what? They've been thinking I'm everything from Italian to Hawaiian, but I'm not. That's <laughs> the weirdest thing. Uh, I was born in Chula Vista, border town right there in Tijuana. My parents are from Culiacan, Sinaloa. And I think it's because I've been doing these food videos on social with my homies. And um, it's a lot of Mexican food, a lot of mariscos I love to eat. And, you know, I'm talking, I'm saying food, homes, and a lot of stuff. And I can't be. Hey, Salaki, y'all. Salaki, you know, the bottom left, you know, they got that nigga po poised up. Uh, but he, he goes back to that show. You know, this nigga before my time, but he goes back to that show. I forget the name of that fucking show. Like that on Access Hollywood or my radio show. I'm trying to cash these checks. I can't be sounding all hood like that. I gotta, I gotta keep it a little more polished and, and buttoned up. But my whole circle is, is even Mexicano. That's Tootie. Tootie don't look it with a little nana glasses, but he's Mexican. That's Cornejo from Tijuana. Viva. But I think it's my Twitter, you wild. You wild out there. Gracias por todo. Nos vemos pronto. Besos. So, where'd he go? You see, basically, he understands what it is. He understands that, hey, this is the white man's world, and if you want to get money, you have to put on that show, and you have to essentially be in a league with them. You have to calm your Israelite nature down, speak proper, lighten lighten the pitch of your voice not have a beard on your face why because they're under the curses too and that they're the ones that understand this and are honest about it and then you have plenty of northern kingdom that understand this but they're not honest about it they know that they're fucking coons they know that they kiss the white man's butt but they don't want to tell the truth and so hey what does that go back to let's go to hosea again you know they've made a league with this guy but they don't realize it's, it's not gonna go well Hosea 13 and 9 uh no uh 9 and 13 got it backwards Hosea 9 and 13 it says Ephraim and this represents northern kingdom as a whole as well it says Ephraim as I saw Tyrus is planted in a pleasant place but Ephraim shall bring forth his children to the murder so literally northern kingdom brings their offspring to the North America on the hopes of a better life but this is the land of the slaughter the great slaughter is coming and in the process of coming here you know everyone becomes americanized and a fucking whore and, and you know bugged out weirded out daughters become harlots and sons become lazy no good nothings and criminals not all the time but many of many of the time all right and you see that great influx of migrators coming here why because northern kingdom sees this land 
as a promise. As a matter of fact, you go to Genesis 49. This is dealing with end time prophecy. This is how we know, you know, right here in just Genesis 49, this is it says, What shall befall them in the end days? This ain't talking about when Northern Kingdom saw the uh uh, uh the land of Israel and decided no, this is dealing with the end times. We're gonna deal with that right there. All right, Salaki A. And those tribes who had settled before crossing over Jordan, that was uh, Gad, Reuben, the half tribe of Manasseh. That wasn't even Issachar, you know, for, for you uh, fucking scoffers, because they'll sit there. Oh, no, 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 bitch. This is dealing with this place now, Genesis 49 and 14. It says, Issachar is a strong ass, couching between two burdens. What are the burdens? North America and Southern America. Verse 15. And he saw that rest was good in the land that it was pleasant, and bowed his shoulder to bear, and became a servant unto tribute. So we see why, and now this is dealing with Issachar specifically, the so-called Mexicans, but all of Northern Kingdom has adopted this spirit, specifically the Latinos, brothers and sisters, the ones in the world, you know, who don't know yet, right? They have become a servant unto tribute under this man. They, they, they you know, uh, came here. When all of Northern Kingdom came here, uh, what is that, at the time of uh, 700 BC, after fleeing, it tells you in Second Edris, right, getting up under from uh, Shalamanasser, uh, uh, you know, coming from Assyria, sailed under Cape Africa, got here to the Americas, right, or uh, went through Euphrates, Salakia, went through the Euphrates, like it tells us in Second Edris, and they came here, and it's a car specifically rest in the land of Mexico. And we know that by their attributes, they're very hardworking people. But at the same time, they're servantile. So they know, you know, uh, to get up under the white man's boots, so they can get them goodies. It says Mario Lopez trends in Twitter and sets the record straight on being Mexican in Hollywood. So he, he's he been cooning so much that there was a group of Edomites that got surprised when they realized he was fucking Mexican. You know, they're thinking he's Italian or whatnot. Which goes to show you, y'all, man, hey, we... Hey, everybody knows what it is here. Like he said, I'll let him speak again. Hold up. And you know what? They've been thinking I'm everything from Italian to Hawaiian, but I'm not. <laughs> That's the weirdest thing. Uh, I was born in Chula Vista, border town right there in Tijuana. My parents are from Culiacan, Sinaloa. And I think it's because I've been doing these food videos on social with my homies. And um, it's a lot of Mexican food, a lot of mariscos I love to eat. And, you know, I'm talking, I'm saying food and homes and a lot of, like, slang and just kind of being yourself. And I can't be like that on Access Hollywood or my radio show. I'm trying to cash these checks. I can't be sounding all hood like that. I got to I gotta keep it a little more polished and, and buttoned up. But my whole circle is... So right there, I can't be sounding hood like that. So, hey, man, we know, it. hey, ain't nobody ignorant to this shit. We all know what it is. But I just wanted to show you all, you know, Northern Kingdom, they they... Are catching it too in their own way all right obviously judah southern kingdom darker skin brothers and sisters you know we had uh esau Edom, esau edom knows that judah is a head tribe so he had to break them uh the worst and you have the phrase and hey, i heard it first from elder malcolm uh northern kingdom got it first but southern kingdom got it the worst all right and that's just is what it is but ultimately how about shim y'all shy he's going He's gonna get all us together, y'all. What's that scripture? Let's go to Isaiah to put a to put a uh what they call it, a ribbon or a bun on top, whatever the fuck, right? Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is gonna get us back together, y'all. Isaiah eleven and thirteen. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. All right. You also have the scripture, uh, the Lord will raise up the tabernacles of David. Okay, so our relationship is gonna be put back together and we're not going to continue to coon under this motherfucker all right because there's another scripture in zechariah 11 it tells you where the lord uh, zechariah 11 and 14 it tells you the lord broke up the brotherhood between us matter of fact let me get that uh just to, so y'all know where it's at if you, you ever need to prove it zechariah 11 and 14 then i cut asunder my other staff even bands that i might break the brotherhood between judah and israel so our brotherhood was broken up for sake of prophecy but it will be restored soon. So let me give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash, double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations. All like Dakimu Aqua. Learning and teaching and truth and sincerity. Shalom.